I can't think of any other controller that has stood the test of time more than the GameCube controller. Sure, the PlayStation controller and the Xbox controllers, that layout has been around for a while, but the GameCube controller hasn't changed at all in the 18 years that it's been on the market. Even the newest one made specifically for Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo Switch uses a GameCube input. They could have easily made this a USB input. Thinking back at my time playing the GameCube, the official Nintendo controller wasn't my favorite controller to play with. It was this weird looking thing. It might look like one of those poorly designed third party controllers you'd usually give to your little brother, but this one had a little trick up its sleeve. It had a damn fan in it. This video is sponsored by Torchlight 2. It's a Diablo-like action role-playing dungeon crawler for PC, but it's now making its way to consoles like the Nintendo Switch. Now, I'm not usually one for games like this, but the gameplay loop and the loot system sucked me in to the point where I was just trying to see if this game would be a good fit for a sponsorship and I ended up playing for two hours longer than I wanted to. Then I lost myself again when I was capturing footage for this ad. It's a lot of fun. If you don't want to take my word for it, the PC version has an 88 on Metacritic. And the best part is that the game's only $20. The game comes out today at the time of this video's release for PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. And they were gracious enough to give me some codes to give away. Three of you will get a code for the game and the pre-order exclusive Yapper Pet. Just comment why you want the game today and I might hook you up. So check out Torchlight 2 on the eShop or wherever you want to get it because it's everywhere now. I have big hairy man hands. And when I play an intense game, these hands start to sweat. And nothing gets sweatier than a game of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I got to the point where I started to put a hand towel next to my desk to dry my hands in between matches. It's bad. I currently use the PDP Fight Pad Pro because I like how it plugs in via USB. I like how the C-Stick can be swapped out for an actual thumbstick. And most of all, I like how the triggers are just buttons, not big fat full press triggers. I have a bunch of these controllers because they keep sending them to me and because I get them so dirty and gross. The buttons get all gammy from my salty, sweaty hands. And I mean salty. You know when you go to the beach and you get something wet and then it dries off and there's this wavy pattern left behind? That's what happens to my controllers. It's the water evaporating and the salt being left behind. It's gross. It got me thinking about this old Nyko Airflow controller that I used to have. They made one for PC, PS2, original Xbox, and GameCube. I had the GameCube one, which just so happens to be the most useful one for me today. Unfortunately, somehow all of the rubber has fallen off the left stick. I probably loved it a little too much. Because mine was a little bit beat up, I decided to try to buy another one off of eBay. I only saw one, so I bought that one, and it ended up being in way worse condition than the one that I already had. The thumbstick is just straight up broken, and the wiring is exposed. Needless to say, I gave this guy four stars, not five, that guy. I wasn't expecting it to be so hard to track down one in decent condition. I was lucky enough to find even the broken one. If you happen to have one in decent condition or you see a brand new one somewhere, please let me know. As far as button layout is concerned, the A button is a little shallow for my liking. Otherwise, it feels perfectly fine. I had no problems adjusting to it when playing Smash Bros. Ultimate. The only thing I noticed was short hop aerials would more often trigger as full hop aerials for some reason. The triggers are the big meaty GameCube triggers, but I can make do with that. The cable is very long. This controller was from back in the day when manufacturers knew that cable length mattered. I'm burying the lead here, aren't I? The fan works fantastic. It works great through the Nintendo Switch's GameCube adapter. Normally, an hour-long Smash Brothers play session would get real wet, but after all that, my hands were perfectly dry. Maybe a little chilly, if we're being completely honest. You can adjust between low and high settings, but like, what's even the point of low? 
you didn't get this thing just a half ass playing with it. There has to be some weird sort of voltage issues going on with a controller like this, because how do they power everything and the fan at the same time? Well, every time the controller vibrates, it seems like the fan loses power for the brief second that it's vibrating. It makes sense. Having the fan on all the time would probably draw just as much power as having the rumble on all the time. Or maybe there's just not enough power going through the GameCube controller adapter, but I suspect it's the former. A regular GameCube probably has a set amount of voltage that it allots to each controller. So this controller needs to only take up that much power. I'd imagine plugging four of these controllers into the GameCube adapter might cause some problems. But hey, after all this time, that fan still works really good. It has this big vent in the back that sucks the air in through this little tiny CPU looking cooling fan. And it pumps the air out through these holes that are all over the grips of the controller. The air that it pumps out is very weak. It could barely move a piece of paper, but it's certainly enough to cool your hands. You instantly feel it when you place your hands on the controller. And there's these little rubber slats where your skin would meet the controller so you don't clog up the vents. It's a pretty smart design. The fan isn't terribly loud. You can definitely hear it, which kind of adds to its absurdity. But it's not distracting in any way. You can't really hear it when you're playing and you have the controller in your lap, unless you play with the controller next to your face, which you could do on a hot summer night. Make no mistake, this controller is absurd. Imagine showing up to a Smash Brothers tournament and plugging this guy in. You get a lot of weird looks. Not to mention, you'd probably suck all of the power out of that GameCube controller adapter. A fan is a completely unnecessary detail to have in a controller. I wouldn't recommend running out and buying one of these things, but if you do see one in the wild, you might want to check it out because it is pretty damn cool. Although, chances are, you're gonna find a broken one. This is definitely something that could only come out of the early 2000s. They would never make something like this today. Although it would be cool to have something so different. Tons of people sweat all over their controllers, so why not throw a fan in there? Especially if it's a wired controller. Especially if it doesn't need motion controls, or it doesn't need a touchpad, or it doesn't need rumble even. Just throw a fan in there. Nah, fuck that, no one would buy that. I just wanted to talk about it because it's a cool piece of my gaming history. So what do you guys think about the old Nyko Airflow controller for the GameCube that you can now use on your Nintendo Switch if you want to be a weirdo like me? Leave it in the comments below. I'm me on Twitter. And you know, all this other social media garbage. I gotta say, I would 100% main with this controller if they made new ones. Because these old ones are, are a little shoddy. And the sweat has become a problem. It's ruining all my other controllers. I go through controllers like crazy because of it. Anyway, hey, we got new videos and live streams here all the time. Our schedule is usually a pin tweet over on Twitter. We got Wolf Den live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. We got streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. I think we're playing Minecraft tonight. Just turn notifications on over on Twitch so you know when I go live because the schedule is a little weirder. And you can support us here on YouTube by clicking that join button or over on Twitch by clicking that subscribe button, which is free if you have Amazon Prime. You link it to your Twitch Prime. You link that to your Discord. You get videos like this one early. You get private chat time with us and you get to play multiplayer games with us at least once a month. But of course, the most important thing that you can do and the easiest thing is just subscribe to the channel. That's it. And share this video with a friend, a friend that you either play Smash Brothers with or freaking GameCube games with, or maybe you had one of these controllers growing up. Thank you very much. Goodbye.